what's up people today i'm going to be real quick because i did a show the other day or actually last week regarding affidavits and i also talked about how we move things along or we're getting to that section of moving things along in court actually now i want to take a couple seconds to say thank you to all my donors because we are growing supreme society faster than I expected just a little bit I still have the GoFundMe that link is down below we also are working the podcast I missed a week I will not miss anymore and in fact next week I'm going to actually double up and one of the things I'm getting ready to do now is I'm going to be doing more shows so keep the donations coming in you know it cannot be too small they cannot definitely not be too large and the next step is when we're doing more shows when we're talking more about what's going on and we're talking about current events we're going to expand into live shows and as you can see I'm coming up on show 100 and what I'm going to do everybody that donates a hundred dollars or more you're going to be able to set up a topic for a show and we'll do it either live if it's one of those expansive topics such as the right to travel or if it's one of those where I feel more instruction will be needed via adding the text to the screen so you can watch it hit the pause button and then play it and but what I want to do real quick after thanking everybody is I want to go over one of the things you're going to encounter and I say going to encounter because the nature of the beast when you file these lawsuits in federal court the first thing they do each and every time is file a motion to dismiss via federal rule 12 B 6 and the one instance of that is because when I spoke about affidavits a lot of times people are getting upset because they are testimony that remains unanswered but here is the basis of why when you file a complaint the complaint itself must contain sufficient factual matter accepted as true which would an affidavit would be because you're going to get it signed under penalty of perjury and a complaint must state a claim to relief that is plausible on its face now again what that means is you have to have in the original complaint something that can be adjudicated for one so you're going to have to give the federal court jurisdiction over the matter and we're going to go over that but it also has to have a reasonable claim of relief on its face so if you're writing something down and there's 10 violations and you put 47 million dollars good chance that's not gonna fly there are ways or places where you can actually go and look to see the average or settled cost of each and every violation to where you can actually place those in your complaint factually and they it cannot be thrown out because of the 12b6 rule and I'm going to go over how to defeat that the next part of that a claim has to be facially plausible when the plaintiff pleads factual content that allows the court to draw the reasonable inference that the defendant is liable for the misconduct alleged so when you have them and they're acting under a statute that is unconstitutional such as jaywalking because they detained you for 35 minutes for no crime you have to show one why they did that or how they did that or that it was done and you also have to show that they were acting on something that is pretty much what they would consider policy such as a roadblock that there was no traffic accident 
They were not looking for a specific person or group of persons. But here is the biggest challenge portion of submitting just an affidavit as your complaint. Threadbed recidivals of the elements of a cause of action supported by mere conclusory statements do not suffice. Basically, statements alone fall under the hearsay rule. It has to be supported by evidence, which is why when you I'm going to go over later on the Open Government Act of 2007, which is a part of the Freedom of Information Act. And it had several cases that went along with it that spoke about filming the police when you are encountered by them. And I'm also going to go over the point where I've actually heard officers say, oh, well, I don't want you to hit me with the phone in the face. And because of officer safety, officer safety does not override their fiduciary duty, nor does it override the constitutional restrictions placed upon them. Now, the quick part of defeating a 12B6 ruling, it is two part, but it also goes back to the original statement of showing evidence and doing everything line by line, precept upon precept, keeping everything in its proper order. The first part, the plaintiff must show one, the official violated a statutory or constitutional right. Again, when they stop your locomotion, no matter what it's for, if it is not for a crime, it is a violation. They are allowed to come and encounter you and speak with you. You do not have to answer them. Nowhere is it written that you have to provide an alibi. Nowhere is it written that you have to participate in their investigation. Nowhere is it part of their duty to use force because they are servants. Now, two, that the right was clearly established at the time of the challenged conduct. Now, when you're dealing with the times and there are certain elements that play into the thought process because you are still sitting in front of, you know, 12 human beings that is going to hear this. You're also going to present this to at least four human beings that's going to review this. But if you provide evidence of this, they have no choice but to submit it to a jury. But most of us are not providing any means of evidence. And I've gone over a few forms of evidence gathering. So again, we're going to go deeper into it, but I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention today. I want to make sure you understood that they are going to file a 12B6. They are going to look for immunity. These are minimal ways in helping you beat that bull when they violate your rights.